What the heck is going on? I hear that a lot. I hear that a whole lot when it comes to the Destiny story because that's the right reaction to have. Destiny, historically, has done a pretty poor job with its backstory. At least insofar as presenting that backstory in the actual games. Destiny 1 is notorious for its grimoire, where I would say literally 90% of the important storytelling and background information that exists in the Destiny universe was done in the form of books, essentially, that you could read online. Short text excerpts from getting weapons or completing certain objectives that you could read online. Not in the game, you had to go online to be able to read the grimoire. But it's good. I mean, the, the writing for the grimoire is incredible. And that's kind of why I'm here today. I want to give to you an extremely broad, like, painting with a kind of paintbrush that paints the whole side of the barn in one frickin' go. Extremely broad overview of the beginnings of the Destiny universe. I hope. This is something that becomes a series. I hope this is something that you enjoy, and I hope that it's something that helps you take your first steps into Destiny, or at least try to get an idea of it if you're interested in it, of the very earliest stages of the Destiny universe. Today, we're going over the Golden Age and the Dark Age. We're not going into the City Age. The City Age is essentially where... Everything that we know that is Destiny really starts to take shape when it comes to things like the Tower and the Guardians and the Orders of Guardians and subclasses and things like that. That all happens actually quite close to the modern point of the Destiny storyline. Who are we? What are we doing in Destiny? Well, you have to go back to essentially very close to modern day essentially the mid-2010s. In the mid-2010s, humanity starts to notice something is jumping through our solar system. It started at Jupiter and the moons of Jupiter, and it was landing on them and changing them. And then it goes to Venus, and it goes to Mercury, and it changes them as well. And this body, and we almost call it a celestial body just because of its sheer massive size, that is going through our system finally lands on Mars. And humanity goes, we got to catch up to that thing on Mars because we have no idea what this thing is doing to our planets. We have to get this thing understood because if this is an enemy, we need to prepare for it because that's, of course, what we do. We're humans. We send up the Ares-1 project. This is a space force combined of NASA, the United States, Russia, and China working together to get a space project manned mission to Mars as quickly as they possibly could. And they were successful. In fact, it's this scene that is the first thing that you see when you are starting a new character in Destiny is Ares-1 landing on Mars, the first manned mission to Mars successful. And as Jacob Hardy and crew made their way towards the celestial body. They come up over a sand dune, see the Traveler in all its glory as the first rains were falling upon Mars to terraform the planet. And it is legitimately at this exact moment that the golden age of humanity begins. Human lifespan triples. That's really the famous line about that right there. Science explodes, disease goes away, and we suddenly realize, oh my gosh, the Traveler has literally been preparing these planets for us. We can literally go to these planets and moons and move in. <laughs> like, we can just colonize these things because these planets are habitable to us now. And these planets become absolute bastions of scientific discovery. Venus becomes famous for the Ishtar Academy. You have Titan as these giant floating science facilities on an ocean of methane. And Mars, Mars especially, with cities like Freehold and the science facilities at the Polar Caps, becomes dominated 
by the facilities of Clovis Bray. Clovis Bray is a name that will come up a lot in Destiny lore. In fact, it was Clovis Bray who would eventually create the Exos, one of the three playable races that you can play as in Destiny. Humanity's good. Things are real good for a few hundred years. And then, finally, something happens. And that something is Rasputin noticing encroachment. There's something at the very edges of our system that is starting to move its way in. We don't know what it is. We don't know its intent. But rather than an individual ship like the Traveler, this is a force. This is an armada. This is, a, this is something we truly need to defend ourselves against. And we tried. And we failed. We failed badly. We had absolutely nothing that could put the slightest of dents into whatever this force is. At this point in time, the Traveler was actually on Io, trying to terraform Io, make Io another place for humanity to go to. And just blips out of there, immediately leaves Io right in the middle of terraforming the planet. In fact, you if you if you were to be able to go to Io, which we can't anymore because it's basically been stolen by the darkness, there's a spot on Io where you can literally see where the Traveler was just beginning to terraform the planet, or the moon, rather, and it just failed. It's not, no, I'm sorry, it's not even that it failed, it's just that the Traveler realized, oh, oh God, jeez, darkness is here, and immediately left for Earth. And that's the thing, the darkness was here. The darkness or the deep, the actual inverse of the light and the power source that it is, it, it, it isn't a race. It isn't a, a group of individuals per se. It's, it, it's a force. It is a, it is a natural celestial force that the light naturally counteracts or is the inverse to see the darkness believes in order they believe in very strict regimented repeating order the darkness wants everything to be organized straightforward understandable period and the problem with that is the light paracausal this is where we get to talk about being paracausal this is actually a very good point so destiny kind of created a term called paracausal meaning without causation without beginning or end like it doesn't there is no force which which its reaction is something else happening when it comes to the light the light can just make things happen which doesn't sit well with something that wants complete order. The light can literally extend life, get rid of diseases, mess with the natural order of life and death. And this is really the thing that the darkness seems to have a problem with us with. It's also the thing the Vex kind of have a problem with us with, but that's more just an issue of the Vex basically being librarians and we don't fit into the Dewey Decimal System. But... Bottom line is this, finally, pushing us back and back and back and back and back, Earth is all that's left. And the Traveler is forced to make its last stand on Earth. And after being wounded in the battle, that wound being the giant shard of the Traveler that is now sitting in the EDZ, the Traveler decides to make a last stand. And in, event, in an event that I like to call the Burst, the Traveler let out an absolutely enormous wave of light. Pretty much all of the light that the Traveler could possibly use at that point, that it could afford to use. And it drove the darkness away. We don't really have the details as to exactly what happened and everything, but two, like, two things happened. Number one, the, the darkness is fully forced away. They're gone. But, more important, 
the ghosts were created. Now, ghosts are tiny, autonomous, sentient little robots. They're, they're, they're tiny little buddy ro They're tiny little buddy robots whose job is to be the intermediary between a guardian and the traveler. Now, first off, the creation of the ghost is essentially the marking point on the timeline of the beginning of the Dark Age. Dark Age sucks. Dark Age is terrible for humanity. Science is gone. Society is gone. Technology is gone. We're back to being very small villages, very like hovels, enclaves, very territorial, very, for a term, primitive especially compared to the height of the Golden Age. Now, first off, also, the Dark Age, we don't have an exact date on pretty much anything when it comes to the Destiny universe, other than the fact that the Destiny universe timeline with, you know, Jacob Hardy and Ares 1 happening basically around 2014, 2015, but that's it. Other than that, it's very difficult to find hard dates on anything when it comes to Destiny, things like how long was the Dark Age? How long was the Golden Age? What year is it now? You're not going to find answers to those things for the most part. We have educated guesses, but I'm not going to say any of them here because they range from hundreds to thousands of years. I don't want to get it wrong, to be honest with you. I don't want to try to give you misinformation. Ghosts started going around and suddenly reviving people. And this is the first time this had happened. This is the first time that the ghosts had gone out and started to bring people back. And all these people that the ghosts are bringing back are at this point known as Risen. The problem with humans is that humans are greedy. So as soon as you have these Risen, who by the way have absolutely no memory of their former lives, no Risen have memory of their former lives, and never will as far as we know unless they're able to find something on them that gives them a hint as to who they once were, uh, you know, Anna Bray, the Risen very quickly become warlords. And these warlords rule over swaths of the earth. They force their way into villages with raids. They force tithes. Some, some protect, but not many. This is, this is an era of lawlessness. And finally, a few Risen start to gather together and get an idea of like, oh, hey, you know how that warlord, that one warlord is, you know, having a few people beneath him as a gang? Well, we can take care of the gang. And together, we can definitely take care of the warlord. And Lord Salad Bowl, you know, Lord Saladin, at this point rises up, not to be ironic, to form the Iron Lords. The Iron Lords are the oldest group of Risen purely focused on the defense of humanity during the Dark Age. And they're kind of like a combination of the idea of Arthurian knights and badass Vikings. They're kind of this combination of the two. In fact, they live on a mountaintop called Fellwinter Peak, which was given to them by Lord Fellwinter, who was convinced to eventually become one of the Iron Lords. It's, I mean, it, it's something right out of old school medieval fantasy. It's awesome. I love the Iron Lords. I think they're really cool. I think they have a really cool story. These Iron Lords finally start bringing people under their wing. These are the first true defenders of humanity, and people want to stay with them. They're looking for a symbol of hope. The Iron Lords are kind of a first one, but Traveler's still there too. The Traveler is for all intents and purposes, dead. It has been completely silent since the burst, since the creation of the ghosts. But people still see it as this great protector. It is something that, in our hour of greatest need, saved what of us it could. People start gathering under the Traveler. It starts to seem to be a natural place for people to go, for people to gather and meet. And enough people start gathering that the Iron Lords by themselves are not enough. There's just not enough of them, so there need to be more Guardians. The first of these 
and the oldest of the Titan orders is the Pilgrim Guard. And the Pilgrim Guard are not armed in the way that modern Guardians were armed. We're talking almost like a Roman Centurion style of unit, style of defender, where you have a plate-armored, massive unit of a defender with a giant shield. I like to think it's like a giant tower shield. And most of the time, a war hammer. We don't have firearms as weaponry at this point, or if we do, they are exceedingly rare in the time before the building of the last city. Pilgrim Guard are really the furthest back point that we can reach to, to know the modern foundation of the Titan Orders and really of the Guardians because there are no subclass divisions at this point. It's basically, you're arisen, you have the ability to, you know, literally take a shot to the head and sit back up five seconds later and keep on fighting. Yeah, you seem like someone we want defending us. Here's armor, here's a hammer. Please defend us. And they did. And they did it very, very, very well. The big problem is that Earth finally gets invaded. And Earth gets invaded by the Fallen. The Fallen, we know more about them now than we ever have, especially in the current state of Season of the Splicer. We know that there's multiple sides to every story. But the Fallen were our mortal enemies during this period. They are brutal scavengers and essentially pirates doing very fast raids against us and against our villages and anywhere that we could possibly try to live because they're scavengers. They need items to get, and if they're going to get any items or goods, they have to come to our civilization pretty much to get them or just try to scrap everything that's left of the scars and ruin of our old civilization. The Fallen believe we stole the Traveler from them. The Fallen at one point far in the past were themselves blessed by the Traveler. Not in the way we were. Not in the way that Guardians were, but as a civilization, in the way that the Golden Age was, they had their own Golden Age, but they never had their own Dark Age. They never had the Traveler defend them. In fact, the Traveler fled them when the darkness came their way in an event that eventually came to be known as the Whirlwind. But the Whirlwind scatters the multiple houses of the Fallen across the universe, across the system, and they find their way to us essentially because they're chasing the Traveler. They're chasing their god, which they call the Great Machine, and they want to be more like the Traveler in every way, which is why you see so much of Fallen society about augmenting themselves with mechanical bits and things like that. They believe that their god is a giant machine and they want to be more like a machine. Sounds a little bit like the Om Messiah, if you ask me. And I know this has been an extremely top-level, kind of glossing over idea of everything that has happened with humanity. But we're finally at the point now, and this is where I'll be wrapping up, with the foundation of the last city. There are enough people gathered together in one location, that location being under the shadow of the Traveler, that everyone starts realizing we need to make a home. We need to make somewhere we can defend. We need to make somewhere that we can gather, that we can survive. And finally, this is where things like the consensus, which is the kind of ruling governing body, the ruling governing uh, civilian body of humanity starts to form where the Vanguard as an individual entity, as humanity's essentially defense force, the Guardian's defense force, starts to come forward. And it's finally at this time that the Pilgrim Guard starts to kind of get this nickname of Guardians. We'll go more into the City Age next time as, uh, as I make this series, but what's important at this point is we know... Humanity has been knocked down and really, really almost killed. But there's finally a location on Earth that is defensible. That is a home 
and is that and it, it's somewhere that we can finally stage some sort of organized defense and resistance against all of these forces that are suddenly in our system because you have to realize by this point the hive are in our system the cabal are in our system the vex have already completely vexified mercury and turned it into one gigantic machine and the fallen are on her like things are bad things are really really bad for humanity but at least at the very least we have defenders, and we have a place to defend in the last city. If you stuck around this whole time, I really, truly appreciate it, and I hope you guys at least got some answers or an idea of what's going on in the Destiny universe. If you did enjoy the video, please do consider subscribing. I know everyone's sick of this spiel, but... It's what we got to do here on YouTube, man. So please do subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And tell me what you guys would want to know more about or if there's any details you feel like lost over in comments below because this is a series I would love to continue and a series that I would love to really sink my teeth into it. And I know I'm being incredibly broad here. I know I'm painting very, very broad strokes, but that's the whole idea of this series is to try to give as basic an intro to the Destiny universe as I possibly can. Thank you guys again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. This has been Scan with GLHF TV.